This conference will now be recorded. Okay, so we'll call to order the budget committee meeting for May 18th. Are there any additions or removal of agenda items? I have a couple of corrections. Okay. And um, first is the addition of the general general reserve fund, which will be B, letter E. And then my correction is in the approval of the budget. All the years are reflected in correction. It should be 2021-2022. I obviously copy and paste that every year and did not change that. Okay. So is there a motion to approve the agenda as corrected? I move to accept the agenda as corrected. Is there a second? I'll second that. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Call the roll, Stephanie. Uh, Grant Williams. Hi. Noni Anderson. Hi. Sarah Allen. Hi. Rick Hobart. Hi. Dale Webb. Hi. Chris McNair. Hi. Sam Potter. Hi. Donald Garmond. Hi. Motion carried. Okay, so we'll move on to the approval of the minutes. Has everyone had a chance to read the minutes that Stephanie sent out? Are there any corrections to the minutes from May 11th? Dale Webb, go ahead. Um, on the front page under the water fund, I think this is where I asked you, and it doesn't mention this, I asked the question if we were going to do any uh, employee uh, wage resets. You know, we talked about bringing up, and I, I remember the discussion that was talked about was, yes, we were in the library, and then we had one person that was being adjusted that worked in water and sewer. Yeah. Um, Nothing here. Then the last sentence of the first paragraph. Th yeah, but it, it just it says an employee um, in the let's see where did it say that an employee in this fund. Yeah. So that that is that is not an admin fund. Although they they are partially in that one too, I believe. But so, what is the correction you want? Well, one that I even brought up that question, and two, the two employees or positions mentioned was uh, one in library that was getting an adjustment, and then the one in the water sewer fund that was getting an adjustment um, outside of a raise. So this um, is the discussion. Can you hear me? So this is the discussion for the water fund. And I don't do, as a reminder, I don't do the he said, she said as, long, as much as I can. So I put staff noted that there is an employee in this fund. My suggested edit, which I think would appease your request, would be in parentheses, as well as the library fund and general fund. End of parentheses. Um, that is scheduled to get a larger increase to catch them up with the industry as Mrs. Mitchell was directed last year by council. Does that, does that satisfy you? Yeah, that, that covers, and I think it was mentioned in the library <coughs> that there would be a future adjustment. It wasn't just this year. You couldn't do it all this year. That's the one in admin, and this is the second year. I think that discussion in the meeting was fairly vague for a purpose and perhaps you're wanting more meat to it than is really necessary in the meeting minutes. Uh, so we're saying there's one in admin too and besides the library and the one that's in the water sewer there were two employees that worked in City Hall that needed 
that adjustment and one is the library position that is going from part-time to full-time. So it's a little bit different than the uh, colleague adjustment to get closer to their counterpart. That's, I think her worry a little bit, Dale, is she can put that in the water fund, but that discussion wasn't about the library part wasn't even that's like in library, right? Right, and I agree. It was just that I asked that question if there was any employees getting the, this wage reset, and that's when you brought it up that yes, there was, and mentioned where they were. Yeah. Um, I don't remember hearing that there was two in admin. I heard the one library, and it was going to be a two-stage affair, and one in the water and sewer fund, but I th they do work in your office, so. Well, and the two stage affair, affair is in the city hall. It's not in library. Oh, okay. That's, well, then that's I, was... I think the conversation is getting a little mixed up. That it's not. That, yeah. Okay. Is that clarification satisfactory? I think that's good for now. I'll have to come in and listen to the audio. <laughs> not that it's going to matter. But just a reminder to everybody, I try not to take the he said, she said. So there will be times when you ask a question and other people ask follow-up questions, which this isn't just for you, Dale. This is everyone, um, where it'll be staff noted and then whatever the answer was, rather than JR asked this question, Dale asked a follow-up question, Sam asked an additional question, and then staff answered. Yeah, go ahead. Am I the only one who can't hardly hear Stephanie? Can you hear me better now? You sound really muffled, and I can't see your lips move. It's like the city hall has the worst connection of everybody here, and I don't know why. It could be that I have headphones in, and I am a notorious mumbler. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try to keep my speaker closer to my face. Oh, thank you. I'm really having a hard time. How about now? A little better. Okay. So, Dale, do you, you want the words in parentheses or are you okay with the minutes as written? Well, I'd like the, the updated version in parentheses. Okay. Stephanie, you have that correction. Are there any other corrections? I'd entertain a motion to adopt the amended minutes from May 11th. Deal, go ahead. I'll make a motion that we adopt the May 11th, 2021 Budget Committee minutes as amended. Is there a second? I second that. So I, is that you, Sam? It was. Okay. So it's been moved and seconded. Go ahead and call the roll, Stephanie. Donald Norman. Aye. Sam Potter. Aye. Bruce McNair. Aye. Dale Webb. Aye. Rick Hobart. Aye. J.R. Allen. Aye. Noni Anderson. Aye. Grant Williams. Aye. Motion carried. Okay, so we'll move on to deliberation. We're going to start on page 14, which is the library fund. And your librarian is on the call tonight. So we'll start with the income section. Are there any questions or clarifications on the income section? Uh, 
How did you come up with the thousand dollars on library fines when it, last year was eight hundred? Is it because we were closed? Um, yes, we were closed for a section where we didn't have people coming in for several months. We were checking out materials and having them available on our cart and printing. So we had some form of service, but we weren't collecting fines for several months while we were closed. So um, we don't anticipate that being a plan for next year. I, I anticipate it going up slightly, but we left it low just in case. Okay, thank you, Shannon. Mm -hmm. Any other questions on the income section? If not, we'll move on to payroll expense. Are there questions on this section? <coughs> Go ahead, Bruce. Um, good evening, uh, Chairman. Good evening, uh, Shannon. Good to hear your voice. Good to hear yours. Um, <laughs> that's nice of you. Um, under salaries, we have uh, the year in forecast 48,955, and we're proposing to put uh, a full time position. Is that oh, correct? The so the, to clarify, the full-time position I'm understanding is 20 hours a week and up. Um, so we have this last year we was very different, um, but we're we've had one employee uh, that's been operating just under 20 hours for quite some time. Um, Nancy Birch retired. So for a while we had three people and we could kind of operate with the several part times, um, but it's pretty hard to hire for just a few hours a week. So decided that it's best to move to um, not try to skirt under that 20 hours a week for one employee and allow that to be a full time, which would be 20 hours or a position. And then having another position which is 10 hours and not trying to hire for so little hours a week for an employee because it's really hard to do. You kind of get your position laughed out if it's under 10 hours. So it's just to kind of maintain a good balance to keep the library open and operate consistently and not to try to just stay right under to not go over for benefits. You're, you're muted, Bruce. I just figured that out by the time you yelled at me. Um, the position of librarian, is that, uh, how many hours is that a week? My position's 26 hours a week. Okay. So there's 50-some uh, hours total for the week, um, 56, I guess. So the increase of the, of the under the budget, they were talking about, uh, I think, in the header of the general admin fund, it speaks to uh, moving in as a full time position. But you've clarified that. It says one part time staff position has increased to full time. And you, you've clarified that's only 20 hours. Well, is any, that a question for me? Anything over 20 hours is considered full time. Oh, okay. I thought it had to be above 20, but that's all right. So we we don't see a great increase in salary, but what we do see is a big increase in insurance. Mm -hmm. We went from 23,000 to 40,000. Um, I don't know if you could call that big increase, but uh, it seems kind of significant to me. Um, the problem I have with insurance is insurance is not something we have a lot of control over. The powers that be deem this is what it's going to cost. I'm not saying that's going to be that 40000 but uh, we have 
56 hours of work time being done down there, man hours. So, uh, is, the, is the library seeing that kind of usage? Is the library, are you asking if the library is getting enough usage to warrant that? That's you just, yeah, you can call it that. Well, it's been a very strange year. <laughs> So I'll give you that, but um, we've been giving some kind of service the whole time when we were closed, and a lot of libraries haven't done that. It's, it's kind of scary to know what this year is going to look like. We're planning a whole whole series of programs for children. We're really trying to be creative to boost up usage because without being able to do programs requiring masks for people, it's yeah, it's hard to get people in the library, but we've still had we've been printing for people, helping them get their coronavirus, everything situated with the workplace and um, unemployment benefits. And we've been helping a whole range of people. It just looks a little different right now. And we're not sure what that's gonna look like this year, but we're expecting our usage to start going up once coronavirus restrictions are less restrictive and we're able to do programs and go back to what we used to be able to do here. And what that one position does that would be boosting up to full time and does benefits does all the nuts and bolts of the library as far as a lot of the processing and upkeep and maintenance of the collection as well as doing story times and helping at the desk. So she has quite a bit of responsibility aside from me. I would say it warrants it, but that's just, it's something I've been, I've been looking at for a while, knowing that Nancy would retire at some point and we were going to have to make a decision for what we would do for staffing in the future. And it just seemed like shorting ourselves the hours and hiring three people instead of just having a, two solid people. It was time to make that change. Well, I'm just, just uh, for a moment, I, I hate to put you in the spot, Shannon. Um, mm -hmm. I don't mean to. Um, so, I just, uh, just for clarification on the issues, um, this probably goes between the budget committee council and their decisions on that sort of thing. I just. Uh, you know, this all comes out of out of uh, the general fund, and you. You're, you're muted. Uh, me. You're still muted. <laughs> you hear me now? Yes. Hear me now. Yes. Are you done talking? <laughs> yeah, I said I'm done. Okay. I, I had a conversation with myself. Then I seen Noni waiting and went. <laughs> Go ahead, Noni. I wanted to uh, comment. I think that will changing to uh, one full time employee in addition to Shannon will really help uh, make makes more makes a better organizational situation than trying to use three full part-time people. It's really hard to schedule sensibly with three people. Yeah. 
was all. I just think it's a very good move. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to speak in justification of uh, hiring that second person full time. There's a lot of busy work that takes place in the library. And if you've got two or three people in there that are trying to check out books, you got to put away DVDs. There's a lot to do, and um, you, you need the additional staff, and I, I support it. Are there any other questions on the salary payroll expense section? They are? Yeah, Shannon, I guess I always assumed you work full time. I didn't realize it was 26 hours. And my question would be, why couldn't mm -hmm. you go to 36 since you're the full time person with the benefits? Because this $4,000 increase in salary is costing $24,215 in total cost, which is a quite a big jump for just a few more hours. And and, and then also the what you said you don't know what COVID's going to bring. We don't know what's going to bring either. So when no one knows, there's going to be an increase in demand. So I'm just kind of wondering, from your mind, why a full time isn't 40 hours? Um, full time isn't 40 hours to me because the city has it at 20 hours. I've always thought of full time as 40 hours too. So it's 20 hours according to what our budget is. Um, I personally wouldn't go to 36 hours because I have a young kid and that's not something I would be interested in doing. Um, also, there's a lot of just, I mean, there's a position that needs to do, like I said, a lot of the nuts and bolts of the processing and the just keeping the library open and maintained and that would be that position. And it frees me up to be able to continue pursuing grants and building up service and promoting the library and all of those other aspects. But um, I guess in answer to your question, I'm, I'm not interested in doing 36 hours at this time in my life. Okay, my follow-up question that would be, last year was a pretty light year for usage and we don't know what's gonna mm -hmm. happen this year. We've, we've survived how we've been. What is causing the change in the, in the biggest picture? Is it the benefits that somebody wants or they're going to leave? Or I just kind of want to know what you're thinking. Well, like Moni said, having two positions with benefits just adds value to the organization. Um, in addition to that, for a long time, I was uncertain about making any changes because we had Nancy Birch and I knew at some time she was going to retire. And I was just trying to anticipate what we would do once she retires because I hired a third person on our staff when she was here because she was starting to um, want less hours and starting to slowly edge towards retirement. So once she officially retired, um, I don't want to have continue having three very part-time people and training them and keeping them all up to date on being consistent at the desk. It, it manages a lot better in our library to have the three of us top right consistently and it's just it doesn't make sense to me to hire a small and because when somebody starts working at the library they love it they want more hours i mean but it's just hard to get somebody in here that's just a couple hours at a time but in order to cover vacations and um keep the library open when i'm gone or somebody's sick you need to have somebody that can do more hours when there's just two people aside from me. Thanks for that clarification. Can you remind me what hours the library is currently open, open this week? The, the total number of hours? Yeah, every day. Which day are they open and how many hours? We're open a total of 40 hours. We're back to our normal number of hours. And that would be Monday, Wednesday, Friday, it's 10 to 5, Tuesday, Thursday, 12 to 7, and Saturday, 12 to 5. Sorry, you said that kind of fast. Is it every day of the week you're open? Every day but Sunday. Okay. So Tuesdays and Thursdays was, I got I got Monday, Wednesday, 10 to 5. Tuesdays and Thursdays was what again? I was going to write it down. 12 to 7. 
Oh, 12 to 7. Okay, and Saturday was 12 noon? to 5. Mm -hmm. 12 to 5. Okay, all right, thank you. You're welcome. Are there other questions in this section? Hearing none, we'll move on down to other expense section. Are there any questions for Shannon or staff on the other expenses in the library? I was curious how utilities have not ever gone up when everybody else's utilities go up. Uh, Angie? <laughs> Based on historical data. And what are you looking at for utilities? You're just talking about just natural gas and natural and gas and electricity. The, look at the action in the last two years. That's what I'm basing it on. I mean, like electricity has been was three thousand dollars. This year we budgeted four thousand. I just I drag over the forecast to match that just to be safe, but oh, I, so we're not going to come in at that. You didn't put so. the actual forecast; you just drug it over. I just yeah, I forecasted the full the full amount for utilities just as a <clears throat> because I can't. I mean, I can add up the last six months electric bills, but they're not always the same so okay okay i get it yeah. so you thought we had enough fluff in there you weren't worried about the small yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. okay are there any other questions uh you had another one contract services going up 1100 over last budget what was what would that be for um that's a good question we we had Contract services, 1,500 of that is for our, um, I, I forget, uh, our software, the um, our catalog that holds all of our patron records and all of our materials and item records and allows people to access that online. Um, that's That's been what we've had budgeted. What the, the 26 upping that is for is to um, increase our lending service. We right now can request items from other libraries um but i've been doing that just on my own which is pretty time consuming where i check in with another library to get an item for somebody but a lot of libraries join a service where you can see what you can just put in a request and are able to um, get something sent from another library and I'll actually be able to publicize that service because it it will take a lot of lot less time on my end. It's just a service that a lot of libraries subscribe to. Um, and the way I think of it is that that benefits our um, our book budget instead of upping the book. You're breaking up, Shannon. Budget anymore? Like last year, barely very generously added a couple thousand to our book budget. That allows us to get those one times for people that they're interested in reading without actually purchasing from the library. Um, and patrons, they do pay a $2 shipping fee for that, but that's the overhead for the, um, the service that allows us to enroll from other libraries. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Shall we make a motion? Sure. I make a motion that we tentatively approve the general library fund. Is there a second? I'll second that. I got Grant seconding. Go ahead, Stephanie. Grant Williams? Hi. Darren Allen? Hey. Bruce McNair? Um, nay. You said nay? 
Yeah, nay. Donald Gorman? Aye. Dan Hunter? Aye. Rick Hobart? Aye. Noni Anderson? Aye. Dale Webb? Aye. Motion carried. Okay. So next we'll backtrack to page 12 for the police budget. We'll start with income section. Are there any questions on the income section? Uh, just that I noticed income was down $25,790. That's the SRO reimbursement. Most of that, 19.4. Yeah. And donations. Yeah. Yeah, donations are because that's usually a donation that has to do with the Intel picnic. It didn't happen. Any other questions in this section? I, I do have a question on the SRO, uh, Josette. Was there no contract with the school? Was it just a handshake deal? They could quit whenever they wanted? No, there is a contract. They ultimately finally followed the exit clause of it. Sorry, I couldn't hear that. There's an exit clause, you said? Yeah, so there's a contract. There is an exit clause for both parties, and they followed that exit clause. So was it terminated early then? Yeah, there's just an amount of notice they had to give to get out of it, and they did that. Okay. That, and then we asked them to follow the exit clause in the contract, and then they followed it and exited the contract. Mm. Okay, thank you. Yep. And Chief's on too, so if there's questions he can answer too. Just having troubles hearing you, that's all. Go ahead, Sam. Uh, was there any thought that they may pick that back up once the children start going back to the school full time? With the current administration, there is no belief that they're going to pick that back up. So without okay. a change in the administration, uh, probably not. Okay. Noni, go ahead. I see there's... Um, Instead of reducing it when there's no SRO, I was increased salaries to 5.1. And I'm wondering if we still, if we have five people. No. Sort of. What does that mean, sort of? Well, I mean, there's, I explained it to you on the phone yesterday, the the difference in the adopted budget that you guys see. Yeah, yeah I know. Supplemental. And yeah. then, yeah, so we budgeted for what's in here is basically half a position. So, yes, there are five people, but it's not five full time. No, I'm, I'm aware of that, but it still is budgeted for five people. It says salaries, 5.1 full time employees. There's five officers, and then there's the, the, uh, Code enforcement. That was my question. Do we have five officers? Yeah, they're all working. Connor could come on. I'm not. I'm not asking about the numbers. I'm asking about the number of people. Yeah. Yes, we 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 currently have have five staff members at this point. Five officers. Yes. Not counting the code enforcement. Not counting what? I'm sorry. The code enforcement position. No. So that, that's the 5.1. That's not a law enforcement position. That's a local. I mean, that's right. it. That's... 
the uh, is that is that the port one, the code enforcement? No, that's not included in that. No, that would be the point one. Yes, sorry. Okay, and you, we have five people on staff right now. Five officers. Yes. So, do we have twenty-four hour service now? No. Why not? Um. We almost need to have like seven officers to do that, or everybody has to work 12 hour shifts. And we've been struggling through the last year with people out on medical leave, and that's currently what we're doing right now. So we've been operating with basically four, and at one point we we're operating with three. Okay, we are still a low crime community. Yeah. And I still have not heard any justification for five officers even though the city has increased its population we're not that big that is true but we have to be able to cover we have to be able to cover everybody's time off i mean you have if you have four people working and you have two shifts per day you're able to cover cover just days off if somebody goes on vacation then you got nobody to fill that void so you still you still are not working with an agreement with the county? Um, we we don't have a signed service augmentation agreement, but we are in discussions with the county right now in a possible way to fund the other half of that fifth position. So we are still there is no uh, scheduling. So that there's anyone on at night, is that correct? Oh, there's there's people on at night, yes. Overnight? Not all night, no. There is there is a, a gap of on call time. <coughs> Sergeant Carnahan and myself cover about six hours a day of on call time. I'm sorry, six hours a day and what? An on call time during the wee hours of the morning. Okay, and you and Sergeant Carnahan each live at least 30 minutes away. Yes. And that would take a siren to go to get that fast. Yeah, if it was an emergency, yes. Mm -hmm. So do we never have emergencies at night? Yeah. We do have emergencies at night. We have emergencies overnight. They're very sporadic and they're few and far between. We, we have our, we, we staff our scheduling based upon when the most call volume is. Well, it's, it's really hard to tell what the call volume might be because the little bit that's in the paper only mentions occasional warrant arrests and traffic tickets somewhere near Highway 47, and then investigating reports. In other words, we have no real understanding of what the work volume is. Well, by that last month, helpful. I'm sorry. That would be helpful. Okay, generally the, the call volume is reported during city council. It's not reported to the newspaper. Um, but as of, uh, well, we had the council meeting yesterday and we were over 1,800 calls from July of first of last year to current. And that includes uh, questions or does that always require an officer? Anytime somebody calls dispatch, there's a call generated. Um, the calls came through dispatch. You're not talking yes. about calls to the telephone line here locally? No, those generally aren't tracked. Just okay. the ones that go through dispatch. 1,800 from dispatch. Yeah, it was just over 1,800. I don't have my papers in front of me right now. No, 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 I don't, they don't, don't need that precise. So you're getting, at this time, uh, 1,800 and slightly less than a year. Um, yeah. 
So what do those, I mean, there, there is so little public information since maybe we can start going to council meetings again, but I'm not quite sure that that's clear because we need all that good. I, I'd be glad to forward you a spreadsheet of what we're doing. I would like to see that very much, yes. Okay, I can do that. Okay. Stephanie knows how to get hold of me. Okay. <laughs> okay. She's the go-to person. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey, Noni, just for future reference, you can sign up for Stephanie's uh, council meetings email, and she can email you the packet um, that periodically contain Chief's report. Mm -hmm. <coughs> okay, that would be good. I'm not as mobile as I used to be. <laughs> Are there other questions in the payroll section? In the what section? Sorry, I couldn't hear you. Payroll expense. Oh, yeah, I did. Uh, I just wanted to make a comment. It looked like your salary was up 18699 Is that going to make up the half? Or is that just for a half employee? Are we going to reduce to 4.5 or are we going to be able to stay at 5.1, Chief? Um, that's kind of still up in the air at this point, but I think uh, we're, we're looking and my hopes is we'll stay at that that number, but I think we're going to be end up being about four and a half. Yeah, because I noticed your uh, insurance benefits went down by like $4,500 in cost. Yeah, and I think that's because it's only budgeted half. So I don't I don't know how, how Angie went through that. It's just half. Half a position, half insurance, half for hers. <clears throat> um I had a Vehicle maintenance, Chief, I see that took a big slash. Is that going to be enough? That was actually because of the, it, it looks that way. I budgeted about 8,500 almost every year, and we've been doing well until this year, and we've had uh, a couple of major hits. Um, we blew a transmission out of one of the vehicles that cost us a little around $6,000 that wasn't anticipated. And then one of the chargers had some warranty front end work and then some other work that nobody seems to know how it happened, but there was some other damage to the underneath portion of the car that we had to pay for. So I'm not anticipating any any huge hits, but that's uh, part of my reasoning for adding uh, $10,000 to equipment purchases just in case I need to find another used car somewhere. Got it. Is that 15K for 2021? Was that amended budget? I can't remember. Yeah, yeah that was supplemental. Supplemental. Okay. That's it. Thanks. Are there other questions to the payroll or other expenses section? Yeah, I did have another question. Go ahead. On um, uh, education and training. Mm -hmm. has gone up considerably so what that, is that that's in anticipation so as as you're aware we're required to, to have a minimum number of hours re to maintain certification and COVID has really messed up training um over the last year and we're gonna have to play catch up somewhere ah, makes sense yeah Go ahead, Grant. Uh, are we really expecting fuel prices to go up that much? I certainly hope not. Yeah. Um, I'm Jeez. planning I'm planning for the worst and hoping for the best. I have yeah. heard some, some scuttlebutt out there that we could be seeing some $4 a gallon marks. Oh, yeah. Um, and that, that depending on how many trips we make to the jail. Yeah, California is already at five, so. Yeah, so I, I'm hoping, hoping not, but got to be prepared, I guess. Yes, good move. 
Go ahead, JR. Uh, just speaking to the fuel chief, how many officers currently drive their vehicles home and back every day? Is it everybody? No, just two of us. Oh, is that a change? No, we, we had, we tried some stuff for a little bit and it wasn't working out. So um, no, it, we've primarily been at two of us taking cars home for several years. Um, I would like to come up with a, a new model so we can provide a little bit better service, um, but I don't know if the uh, the city is really on board with that. I, I wonder if it would pay to somehow give an officer a couple hundred more a month to live in Vernonia and not have the gas bill and the wear and tear on the vehicle and have somebody here. I don't know if there's something, we have you know, that's a big discussion, but. Yeah, we, we've had a 5% residency stipend for quite a while, and it, it's not interesting enough to get people to uproot their family. And 5% of the starting salary, and then what would his starting salary be? Um, well, we're in contract negotiations right now, and I want to say it was... Angie, do you have that number in front of you? Um, uh, right now, we're going to be about, uh, about $2,500 a year. 5%. The 5% would be about $2,500 a year. Added to their salary, yeah. That wouldn't cover much rent. So perhaps something better could be done. I know I, I had talked about that last year. Yeah, I know right now we're we're actually in the midst of, of contract negotiations and I, I think they're they're coming pretty close to an agreement and that's bringing it's it's actually getting the salaries up to where they're more competitive with our, our local counterparts. Um, and that should be that's reflected in our current budget. That, that's what I was going to ask you, Chief. You think the eighteen six nine nine increase in salary is going to be enough for the contract negotiation, or nobody really knows until it's final? Yeah, I, I, well, they're they're currently good with with the numbers. I don't think they're going to go up from there, um, but. I, I see we're, we're kind of reviewing everything because we see a, the increases coming in the future years of the contract might be a little steep. So I think that's kind of the final things that, that Josette and I and Angie need to go through. Is that a three-year contract this year at this time? Yeah. Other questions for the police fund? Uh, the 10K on payroll expense, if it's not used for equipment, can it be rolled into payroll expense or, or other ex for payroll? That's good supplemental. Okay. And oh, was there? Sorry, Chief. What, wasn't there a payment due for the body cameras? Did I miss it on here somewhere? It's in uh, contract services. It, I don't think it was listed in the notes, but it's in there. Wasn't it like? Remind me. Was it like fifty-five hundred a year? I think our first payment. I I want to say it was right around the fifty. 52 or 55. If I was in my office, I could tell you, but I don't have it right here. Yeah, I'm trying to remember too. I know you you paid it the first year we, we passed that, but I was I yeah. guess I was looking for a line item in here. Looks like you only paid 20, it was like $2,900 this year. Yeah, the first payment was, was lower than the follow-up payments. Oh, 
Oh, la last year was 2,900, or this 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 current fiscal year. Yeah. Oh, and then it goes up for next year. Okay. Yeah, it'll go up, and I think the rest of the payments are equal payments. It was just the first year that was cheap. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions in the police fund? I'll make a motion to tentatively approve the police budget for 21-22. Is there a second? I second that. Sam Potter seconds. Go ahead, Stephanie. Kurt Williams. Aye. Sarah Allen. Aye. Chris McNair. Aye. Donald Warren. Aye. Dale Webb. Aye. Sam Potter. Aye. Noni Anderson. Aye. Rick Hoover. Aye. Motion carried. Okay, so we'll move backwards even further to page six. General administrative. This is the last section of the general fund. Are there Enough. any questions on the administration income? There. Yeah, I notice it's down $56,715, but I noticed the cash carryover year in forecast is 302,136. The proposed budget is uh, 224. 247, which is minus $77,889 of cash carryover. Was that spent last year? You mean was that spent? The 77000 dollars difference. Yeah, because we the the forecast for the whole general fund is ate up some of that. I mean the cash carry for is not a a static number changes every year. All right, I realize that, but so we dipped into the cash carryover. It's always part of the budget. Right, cash I know it's list, it's listed really as income. You're only, you're, you're only guaranteed cash carry for it is whatever you have in contingency, which is way less than that. We brought you two oh. supplemental budgets this year, so you know that, I mean, just in doing that, we had expenses that we weren't anticipating or that were more than what we had budgeted for, which is right. part of that. And uh, then just another, another factor, sure the, the uh, pool account interest was, we brought in $53,000 last year, and this year we're looking at 13000 so there's half of it right there. The interest rates have gone down so much that we're not making any money right now in that pool account. Okay, so I just want to make sure I'm getting the gist of this. Last year, total um, wages and payroll come to $952,970. We had a total income of $1,406,834, which left us $453,860 four dollars to play with so that play with money got spent plus another seventy seven thousand and change from cash carry forward okay can jerry can you tell us where the first numbers you're talking about are because i'm not following well, i'm just going by our income our total income of last year so yeah, but you have to remember jr that all that all three of these funds library and police have their their budgets come out of this cash carry forward this cash carry forward is not just for admin, it's for this whole entire general fund. So when right, you look at the bottom and you see this net revenue of $760,000, then you subtract the police budget and you subtract the library budget, you got zero. Are you on a different page? Because I'm not even seeing these numbers. 
No, I, I'm just adding up the totals from last year, trying to compare last year to this year. Um, if we don't go through it section by section, it's too confusing. Right, it gives me the bigger picture of how much cash is left uh, after all payroll expenses in all three funds. And I'm just kind of curious if we, if, how the cash carry forward works. Looks like we spent some of it, so you, thanks for clarifying that. Are there other questions on the general admin income? For the Ops income. Uh, the 911 tax informational only. We had a number on it before, and there's no number this year. Yeah, I just didn't put it in there. It's, I don't know why that got started. It's never. We don't, it's not money that we get, it's not money that we spend. It's just always been sitting there and I don't really think that it's necessary. We, like I said, we don't ever get anything. Nothing flows through the city for that. I, just something that I, when I started working here, that's what I was told that that has to be there, but I've never seen any documentation or anything. And it's just an in at the top and out at the bottom. It's Okay, thank you for that clarification. Are there any other questions on this income section of the general admin budget? Go ahead, Bruce. Uh, thank you, Jim. Um, Andy, can you hear me? What? Under line item 5449-00, cigarette tax uh, revenue, state cigarette tax revenue. Yeah. You with me? So yeah. there's been a massive increase in that tax. Is that all yeah, designated in state funds? It's not, we're not getting any of that in the revenue sharing? Uh, let me look. I think we were because I thought it was going to programming and yeah I think you might be right on that I see it. whatever <laughs> yeah no in fact our last payment in April was less than the month before we're only getting about a hundred and between 115 120 bucks a month for that Guess she'll just have to buy more cigarettes, Bruce. No. People are quitting. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's a regressive tax during, uh, deemed to hit the poor. So, um, yeah, I was just concerned. I was just trying to figure out is uh, they're not sharing that. It's all going into state into the state budget, obviously. Big surprise. So are there any other questions on page six? If not, I don't see anybody or hear anybody. We'll move to page eight. Are there any questions on the planning and building income? Just that I noticed it was down 45K. Rather be conservative than have to come back with supplemental because we didn't bring it in. You can increase it if that, you guys want. Is that still based on like 15 houses or is that what you're trying yeah, to? Yeah, it's just that the permit fees are really hard to guess. 
issues. It just depends on, there's so many factors that go into what a permit costs. It's not a straight fee like the SDCs or something, so. You were pretty close last year, it looks like. Well, I think we did, I think that's, that the building permit fees were part of the first supplemental we did back in October. But oh. I'll take the credit if you want to give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of a guessing game there, I understand that. Yeah. Any questions on planning and building income before we move on? Okay, so we'll move on to page eight payroll expense for the general admin. <coughs> Go ahead, Dale. So, line item 1500 00, the salaries were up 61, over $61,000. Um, we're adding in a new the new position, the handyman uh, slash caretaker for the cemetery. Yeah. Um, best I could tell from Angie's chart, that's around $38,000. I don't know if that's correct or not, because I have to guess, because I don't have a position listed with it. Right. Um, <laughs> and... Uh, here I can tell you for sure yes 38,000 is correct Dale all right I guess good too um, so we have two positions in admin that we're catching up now did you say we're on the second year on one of them yep okay because I noticed that looking back through the salary sheets that there was significant raises um, my concern, significant, but there were races, yes. Um, so, in looking at those salary sheets to the proposed compared to against this year's, uh, it looks like we're around $24,000 to the plus side. Explain what you mean by that. Say that again. <laughs> Explain what you mean by that. What looks well, like just in what I can see, the differential from the proposed for this year versus last year's salary sheets, um, those are adding up to a little over twenty-four thousand dollars. I think you're he's subtracting the maintenance person and then adding that's what's left. That's how much the increases are for everyone else. Correct. Oh, okay. Now I'm following. Yeah, for everybody else, that would be yeah. that would probably be right. Okay. Yep. So, I understand we're raising the two people up. We, okay. as council, actually encouraged that. Um, but the others appear to be in excess of five of the five percent. The other positions appear to be. I use the five percent as my my multiplier here. So there's there's five percent, but then there's also the the cola stipend that's included in that salary line item. It's not a separate line item. So correct, well, but yes, yeah, the total minor. number is seven and a half percent if you look at each line, give or take. So. Okay. 5% potential increase, it's not guaranteed, right. and then the 2%, 2.5% COLA over here. So, but if I look in last year's, if I look in last year's salary, total salaries, 189,000. Okay. So, if you do that times 5%, of course, we've got these two people that are the outliers, so um, it kind of makes a mute point, but that's only like nine grand. The and I emailed you today on the cola. You said all of it was in this in this line item on salaries. Uh -huh. So the cola is already in there. That amount. 
it would it would slightly increase going into the next budget year. Um, but that hundred eighty nine thousand includes the colas that were that are paid out. So you'd actually have to subtract them off, get the true salary amount, times that by five percent, and then then you could do their their two and a half percent on on each one of them at that point for their colas. Yeah, I, or you could just do the five percent on the whole hundred and eighty nine, and that will that'll bring the colas along with it, and probably be the same amount. So, but you can't do seven and a half times one hundred eighty nine thousand further. Okay, well, I don't. I have a very convoluted spreadsheet that's about this wide to figure it all out incrementally the way it it works. I'd be more than happy to show it to you if you want to go by. I don't take the giant number and multiply it by 5% and slap the new giant number in that column. I have basically what you guys see, but with a lot more information worked into all my formulas and all my calculations so that each employee's 5% is figured out, then there's their new salary amount, then here's their 2.5% of that, and then here's the total, here's any extra certification pay, then, you know, on and on and on. So it's not just a one giant lump together pot of money that I then multiply by 5%. Make sense? Yeah, no, and I would anticipate that's what you do. So I'm just trying to generalize. I mean, it's it Nicole, would come out to be the same number. No, it's just, yeah, it's, I don't know. That, it would be hard to do it that way because I take... I take the, I add the, the five percent or whatever that increase is for the two people that are getting bumped more than that. I figure out their new salary. So let's say everybody's just exemplary. We all get our increases. Then that number is what I use to figure the cola on because we're going to get the increases before we get our cola. So by taking last year's salary and multiplying it by you know the five percent. Then you'd have to turn around and multiply it again by two and a half percent. That's in a nutshell. That's how I do it. But like I said, each staff is got their own line with all the information, of the moving parts. So, just to be clear, so we have the two employees getting the wage resets. That's what I call it. I don't know what you call it, but sure. Uh, so, in this budgeted amount, there is not any more than a potential 5%. For any other employees, no. For any of the other in admin. No. Okay. And the COLA. Right. And, um, yeah, the assumption on the COLA. Yeah. So, have we ever... Uh, presently or in the past so you say you do those individually so when we budget this number like this 250,000 that has the potential to give that 5% raise for everybody just say that was the correct number let's say you don't give somebody a raise have we ever taken that excess money and and added to somebody else's raise The only no. time potentially that that happened, Dale, is when council gave me more, the one year they gave me more than the 5%. And they asked Angie to figure out what was available. And they gave me more than that. That would be the only case. Okay. And but I think I might remember that. And Angie giving it together. I don't think we've done that in anyone else. So, one last thing. Um, so, we're doing these wage resets. How do we track to know that? Are, are we going to be done at the end of this fiscal year on doing the resets? Yeah, they're pretty much near our counterparts, and, and the potential of a merit increase to up the salary amount per hour will make them stay in line unless. For some reason, there's some weird year where we give nothing 
then we'll probably fall below again. We're not as close to our counterparts. We don't have any expected for next year. Everyone's going to be pretty close to their counterparts. We're still at the bottom end of everybody, but we're not outside of the range. So what method are you using to judge the counterpart? The uh, League of Oregon Cities uh, salary wage rate study for our size and shape and positions that are held within our city. Okay, so is that that 2018 League of Oregon Cities document? That's the quintel and you match based on your population mm -hmm. and what other jobs are in that section. We're doing the third, third quintile. Yeah. yeah. Have to look at that today. So. Yeah, it's a lot of information. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. So that's what we based and helped us figure out that really only two are still outside of the range of their counterpart. <laughs> Uh, Noni, do you have a question? The uh, salary code that we were given this time helped them what? Say that one more time, Noni. You kind of broke up. Okay, the salary chart that we got this time for all of the uh, employees was somewhat helpful, but without a position, it's really hard to tell what it is. And you know, but those, the rest of us, most of the rest of us on the budget committee can't tell. And uh, Angie said that some employees don't like to have their salaries known. But if that is a problem for them, they'd better go to work in the private sector rather than the public. Because taxpayers are paying your salary, they can also find out what your salary is if they're interested. They can if they request it, yes. But yeah. I didn't want to put it out on the internet for the, you know, people were just weren't comfortable with that. I didn't. I thought these came to us. They're posted online. I mean, it's all anything in this packet is is out there for anybody that wants to nose around. That it should be posted simply with a a position um, and be given numbers within each department. Sure, but it, that doesn't protect anybody from anything because everybody knows who the finance director is. Everybody knows who the city recorder is. That's that was the that was that's always been the gripe this whole time. And I, yeah, I mean, you know, it's been, always been it has always been a problem for whoever has that position. But never the rest knows who that is. It is public information. Right. And if somebody from the public requests that information, they will receive it. Mm -hmm. And the county has same sort of thing, or at least had. I can't say what they have now. I haven't been on that budget committee for centuries. That is helpful to the budget committee. I'll leave that with all of you to think about. Jerry, did you have a question? I thought I saw your hand up. Go ahead, JR. Yeah, I'm, it seems like everybody's kind of concerned about the wages, and I was too. And I just wanted to put a little perspective. Our total income was $1,344,997, correct, Angie? Yes. Okay. Our total wage and payroll expense this year is $1,000,000. $39,958. That's an increase of 86988 over last year. You're saying wages are a million dollars? Yes. 
1,039,958, according to my calculator. You mean all of the employees added together? Yeah, I'm talking general fund as a whole. So no. it went up 80, it went up almost 87,000 this year. And that puts us now this year at 84% of our general fund income at payroll. Okay, JR, can you reference, a, we're confused. Can you reference a line item that you're looking at? Okay, total like, revenue, page six or page eight. It says 1,334 and change. Okay. Okay, so I just used that number for our total revenue. Okay. And then I added up the total payroll expense from admin, 403,363, police, 527,665. Okay, payroll expense. Okay. And then library, library 108, 930. Yeah. If they're all in black highlights here. Sorry, it's probably a couple different pages, but that's your payroll expense for those three sections, which comes to a look, salaries. Um, I'm sorry, salary total, and payroll expense. Total payroll expense for the entire city is 1.5 million, including benefits and everything. Yeah, entire, well, entire admin, admin, police, and library is 1,039,958. So that, that's telling me we have $305,039 left out of that fund, which is we're using 84% of that fund for salaries and wages now and benefits. So what is this statement making, trying to clarify? Well, I was just concerned at the increase because last year we had, after payroll expense, there was $453,864 left to spend on other things. And now this year you're at 305. And I noticed you slashed 200K out of, um, out of uh, other expenses. And I'm just worried that that, uh, the, that if it doesn't work out, what are you gonna do if you need more money for other expenses next year? Okay, so you're taking the 200K that you're saying is the slash is from the 599 to the 384? Right. But that 599 uh, includes all the supplemental things, right, Angie? Yes, it does. I'm looking at last year's adopted budget. Hang on. I'm just worried that $305,039 left is cutting it kind of tight. And what happens if there's a downturn next year? Our payroll expenses increased $55,000 over what we originally adopted last year before all the supplemental budgets. Well, I'm looking at the numbers that you provided here and it adds up to 952,970 last year for admin. Because reason. we had the supplemental where we removed 35 some odd thousand dollars from the police salary line item. So it was less. Am I hearing that? Did I didn't quite catch that answer? Are you saying it's more than eighty-six thousand nine hundred eighty-eight more or less? I'm saying that if you look at the originally adopted budget from 2021, the one that we're operating under, before we did any supplemental, the payroll was fifty-five thousand dollars less than what I'm proposing this year. So there's a fifty-five thousand dollar difference in payroll expense last year versus this year. 
Okay, the, I must be. And then I'm the difference that you're coming up with with the 86 includes the $35,000 that we reduced out of the payroll of the police fund when we did the supplemental. Okay. And that was, yeah, we brought that to you in, I think that was just the one we just did in April. Okay, I'm just going by the numbers that are in front of me. Well, because that's the new adopted budget. I have to put those in there. Because you guys did okay. the supplemental, that now is the budget. So it's 55,000 basically more this year. Based on what was last year's originally adopted budget, yes. Okay, but it's still, am I correct in saying we're at 84% for wages and benefits in general fund? Of the total? Yeah. Yeah, if that's what the math works out to. I don't, I don't figure that out. I mean, I, but yeah, I mean, if you're, I checked your figures and you're correct on the salary total or the payroll expense total. Yeah, I mean, I might be off a couple uh, tenths of a point, but I think it's coming out to 84%. So I, that's just something an overall picture it kind of shocked me a little bit. So thank you for everybody for list or for uh, listening to me on that. So I don't even know where we're at, but is there any other questions? <laughs> I've been bouncing all over. I don't even know what page we're on. Are we on page 10 now? Or eight. We're on page eight still? Eight. Okay. Go ahead, Dale. So where are we at on the handyman slash caretaker? Uh, we interviewed tomorrow. Do you have more questions? Do you have more than one applicant? We do not. Have one. Any other questions on page eight? Anything on page eight? I, I will say that throughout this process, I've I've drawn a, a, a concern over wages in general. It, it came to my attention the last time we talked that there isn't a pay range for the positions that, that we have in Vernonia. It's just kind of a, a thing. And you said, you know, we're, we're giving people 5%. There's an automatic 2.5 regardless of what the actual uh, number is for cost of living, they get, everybody gets 2.5 every year for whatever. And then there's a 5% based on somebody's determination of, of uh, performance. And then it was also mentioned that, well, we're trying to catch one or two people up with the rest of the herd. And then there was mention of, we're trying to catch up to our counterpart. And um, with without an actual low and high pay range, I you know Jr. brings up a valid issue here that you know if we're spending eighty percent on on wages, is next year going to be eighty five percent, and the year after that is ninety percent? There, the the job that I perform for the city has a specific low and high pay range, and if I the only thing I can encounter is a cost of living unless my job title changes and everybody in the city is welcome to view what my pay range is without having to ask for it. It's public information. And it, it seems like Vernonia is a little bit vague on, on what people could potentially earn. And it, it just overall, I'm concerned that, that there's no structure. And and Jr. brought up the issue that without that structure, here we are. <laughs> so, well, just wanted to throw that out there. Yeah. So the only um, step increase that we have in the general fund that's a range or a published document 
is in the police collective bargaining. That says if you're this officer and this is your staff, you know, go up based on your steps. Um, interestingly enough, I was just talking with Mr. McNair about this, but 10 years ago, you paid the person sitting in my position $30,000 more than you pay me. So there's never been in Vernonia a real process. And that's why when we went to the wage study published by the League of Oregon Cities, it's based on your population. And then it's based on what other positions are held in certain cities. So if you're a one man band, maybe your position, my position would make a lot more money if I didn't have a finance director and I didn't have a city recorder. But if you have those listed positions, then you're in a different quintel of who is at your city, how many is your population, and then what those ranges are. We're, we're at the bottom level for the most part in all the positions in City Hall of that range for our size city with our size positions. Um, and so, I don't know that anyone's going to be a millionaire even in the next 10 years going at the rate we're going. We're probably just going to keep up with our size city, our size town with the number of positions. So I don't Are you looking for a cap on that salary? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and this came up uh, the last time is, you know, if uh, is it is it the plan to give people 5%, you know, indefinitely? Right. Well, we after 10 time. years, that's 50%. No, I see what you're saying. And I think you are right. And we did in the past try to uh, get council to agree to, to uh, having some sort of wage scale and step process for all employees and it's just never never been able to get it through i mean and that it's been several years since we tried but i mean that would be something i would be willing to entertain if council was on board trying to come up with a pay scale for all the non-union employees i think the last time we tried it was in when bill was here right i think so yeah well, that sounds like a good idea I can look into that. Thank you. So are there other questions, clarifications on page eight? Okay, since no one's saying anything, We'll flip to page 10. Are there any questions on the general administrative budget page 10? I had a question mark by 1680-4 Rose Avenue building. Can you explain what's going on there? Um, we receive all the utility bills for that building and then I bill the senior center. There's an income line item that matches it in the admin income at the top of the page, page seven. Or I don't know what page it is. I don't have I'm looking at my spreadsheet on my computer, so I don't have my pages. Page six. Page six. Yeah. 14880 3 on page 6 mirrors that. Uh, 1488. 6. Do I not see a 6? On page oh, 3. 14803, oh. it's the very top of the page, Rose Avenue oh. building. Oh, on page three? Page, no. page, page six, six of the admin fund. 
Yeah, that's the same thing I'm looking at on mine. I just noticed there's a seventeen hundred dollar increase. Well, because they weren't open all year this year. They just they moved into the building part way into the fiscal year. So and then COVID. There's not twelve COVID. months of expenses in this current budget. <clears throat> okay. So that's Got just it. a real time in and out. It's it's going to be what it is. We're going to get charged it. We're going to charge them. Right. Yeah, yeah. I was just I was just curious how that was going to work as far as if the if their budget's going to change for them too. Well, no, it'll just be whatever how much usage they have. So. Yes, Rick. On um, item like line 1680 CC Rider, they still provide a service for our community. And do we um, give them any money in kind like we did in the past? They haven't requested money in the last few years. Okay. That's strange. I wonder if it's because they're getting that grant. Seem more like extortion last time I heard him talk. <laughs> so it is surprising. Well, I didn't ask him if they were going to send me an invoice. I just. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you. Other, go ahead, Bruce. Um, can you hear me? Yep. Um, Got to make sure I hit the right button. Um, 5665-01, retiree insurance. Yeah. Is that uh, what I used to reference as stupid decisions? Uh, is that past employees that uh, they signed dumb contract uh, agreements with? Yep. Seems to be jump, jumping all over, Hale and Brent, just there. Well, we consistently had three people. That's who we've got. Um, uh -huh. and then just recently, the third, there was one that was still covered by the CIS benefit. Well, that that person is now a Medicare eligible. So we dropped them off the CIS last year. That's why it's so low. And then he recently came in and talked to me about getting the supplemental. Whether or not he does it or not, I, I don't know. But I had to assume that he was going to bill us for half of that. Does that go on forever and ever, ma'am? Yep. Well, I thought there was a time limit to it. When they did. <laughs> Pardon me? Noni said die. Yeah, when they die, then it's done. <laughs> That's the time limit. <laughs> Time's up. <laughs> so, it, uh, Angie, can I ask you a question on that? Yeah. Is that like, a, like if when I retire, I have to pay Cobra to keep my insurance going? It costs me money. Does it cost them any money? Um, yeah, it's not Cobra. It's just we pay half. Well, it was Cobra. You're right. When it was through CIS, so they pay half. And then the city picked up the other half. And so now that they're the three of them are of Medicare, they're old enough to be on Medicare. The city picks up half of their supplemental if they get it. So oh, this is just this supplemental. Okay. That's just the supplemental Medicare insurance. Yeah. Got it. Thank you for clarifying that. I'm kind of hard of hearing. Are there other questions or clarifications on page 10? One very small thing. Sure, go ahead, Noni. The Rose Avenue building is on Weed Avenue. I know, but it was, the project was called Rose <laughs> Avenue, and that's what we did. <laughs> I understand that. I can call it the Weed Building. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, Dale. So we've been talking about the facility reserve, and so we're down here to the contingency. Um, 
I'm going to propose that we take 14 grand from the contingency and move it into transfers out. I know some people probably have heartburn over that, but you know, in talking about our housing revenue, we easily could have $14,000 extra in there. Um, looks like housing is going to boom this year. So I, I'm just, I'm just thinking that, yeah, it looks like we're hurting ourselves here, but uh, I think we're going to find throughout this budget, it's, it's probably going to be, that money is going to be there. Okay, so there's been a proposal. Bruce? Um, I agree with you, Dave, on what you're doing, but uh, I would take maybe a little different approach. Um, what's that cut the contingency down to? 36,886. Is that uh, workable for the fund? Is it what for the fund? I'm, at, I'm speaking to Mrs. Handegard. Is that going to cover your your nut on that? I mean, in terms of, are you going to be safe at thirty six thousand? Um, because my proposal 2%. is it's a two percent contingency. My proposal is cut from each one of the the departments in this budget to achieve that fourteen thousand. Um, just a across the board percentage cut. I don't think it's going to be much. 14,000 isn't much. Um, probably, what would you propose uh, to set in percentage wise? What would I propose? How much would it be? 1%? Would four thousand six hundred sixty-six dollars from each department in the general fund be? Yeah, the four. Isn't that what you wanted, Dale? Four, Fourteen thousand altogether. Yeah. Yeah. And so to tell, achieve that, tell me, Dale, what that's for? Facility reserve fund. So not not a purpose a specific item you want to buy with it you just want it in a reserve fund correct well what is a contingency fund if you left it where it is what is the reserve fund what's the difference between contingency and reserve if you're not spending either one of them well, they can spend contingency Yeah, but then, then I just I don't understand why it's being moved if it doesn't have a, a purpose. Well, it does have a purpose. It's a, it's our reserve money to repair facilities, replace facilities. Uh, if you know, like the current city hall and library, they're getting extended on their roof. We're going to probably look at a hundred grand to replace those. Uh, we only have currently eighty five thousand in there. But what, does the, will, what does the contingency money uh, do if you leave it there? So what, it's, you're, it's, what you're missing, Sam, is that council developed a reserve policy resolution, and yeah. in that they set some goal target minimums to go into the specific reserves over a period of time to try and collect a certain amount in each reserve that was legitimate to hold for these kind of spent expenditures that will be upcoming. So one of the things was general fund reserve. It's the only one that doesn't have like a, in the water and sewer, we build those reserves into the rate. But general yeah. fund has $83,096 and was slated to get this year in the reserve policy somewhere around $24,000 to keep on track with collecting enough so that we're ready when these big expenditures happen. That's what 
Dale is saying is that this policy hadn't totally been adopted yet or the numbers hadn't been kind of married to the, the idea that staff was doing. And so we didn't have the 24 in general, so we didn't put it in. But now this policy is in place that the goal should be 2% to hit the minimum to collect the monies to be ready for the expenditure. So that's why he's trying to move forward and getting us to transfer this remaining $14,000, either via cuts, how Bruce is saying it, or take it out of contingency. So we stay on the plan to collect the expected revenue for the expected expenditure. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Did I say that right, Dale? Yep. Perfect. Okay. JR? Yeah, Joe said a couple weeks ago we talked about uh, the line item for the trees that council passed. Am I missing it in this whole budget? Yeah, that, I, when you came in, remember I said in the scheme of writing for the grant and stuff, we did not transfer out the 20000 that was for the downtown improvements in this proposed budget. I said that to you when we sat in my office that day oh i thought you said you were going to do it no we had intended to do what you asked but then in the scheme of writing the budget and getting the grant to travel oregon it was not included in here yeah but no money in that grant was included for trees at all no it was just included with the items that council wanted in addition to trees because the tree thing hadn't been fully flushed out by the council. So, so the, go ahead. Go ahead. I just, I just expected to see it in there. It was a motion. It passed four to one by council. And I've heard before, oh, you have to make a motion to make it happen. The motion was happened, and I still don't see it. So I don't understand. It's a mistake. We made a mistake by not putting it in there. Well, I think we should work to put something in there. I know we got some beautification money and that's gonna go a long way, but we talked about putting money in there and if council doesn't use it, they don't use it, but at least it's in there. Because now we'll hear we don't have any money in there. Well, if we don't put it in the budget, you're right but I'm not opposed to putting the, fixing the mistake and figuring out how to put it in the budget. I would appreciate that. Now we have to find $34,000? Yep. Okay. Well, I guess I'll call that guy tomorrow and tell him not to come in for Senator Well, That's about what's left of your contingency money. <laughs> Bruce, did you have a comment? Uh, I, I was taking just a little different path than, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, then uh, Angela was um, so that dropped the contingency down twenty thousand, which it already was dropped down um, with the fourteen thousand coming out. Yes, yeah. like Sam said or somebody said. So with that that proposed cut where I was making makes it even more um, resonates even more. Because you got to have some contingency, and we have set up in the past through council, you guys, uh, prior councils, that there's a percentage of the uh, the fund is earmarked for contingency and uh, the reserves. Um, is that not correct? They never set a con They could never agree on the contingency percentage. So they why did you have the actual resolution of the there was no directive to staff of this is what you must put in ahead of starting your budget so it was always sometimes it was eight percent sometimes it was 15 percent sometimes it went down if the budget committee pulled it out of there to like five percent so it wasn't a like the reserve policy there isn't currently a contingency policy that says make sure you have this much contingency it was always what was left over or an aim for some bouncing percentage 
uh, okay. But I think that in the past, historically, in the last few years, that I shouldn't use the word historically. It's two years. It's not really this historically. But uh, we've, we've put targeted amounts in on it. You've used targeted amounts on contingency, and maybe it wasn't adopted, but you've been – You've, you've adopted it somewhat in the, in the budgeting process. You know, we've spoken about this in the past. Yeah, in the budgeting so, process, you guys have come up with percentages that we were aiming for. Right. Sometimes That's where I was going. Like this one says it's supposed to be 15% of the operating expense. And we're, we're going to steal from it right now. So that's why it's hard to put something in place if ultimately we may be, the budget committee may change to choose to do differently than what's in place so i don't know what the solution is well we haven't made that decision yet that's uh you're just headed in that direction the decision hasn't been made it's a proposal that's been put forth by various members of the committee um and i don't disagree with any of them i'm just saying that uh, the contingency there for a reason. Yeah. What do you do with the contingency historically, Angela, if you have issues throughout the budget process? You borrow from it, do you not? Right. So it's it's your safeguard, your stock net. You don't uh, um, have to go in and make arbitrary cuts. Right. That's our job. Exactly. So that's why I'm, I'm just over explaining this in my mind. So we need to go in and make some cuts if we want to achieve, in my mind, achieve what council, what committee member Allen and committee member Webb is proposing. Joe Yes. Um, last year, this gave me heartburn and I'm going to bring it up again. There's 51,500 for internet technology services in this budget. And there's another 1,500 for PC maintenance. That's $53,000 or 51,500 in case a computer needs technical support. And I don't understand that much money. And last year, Angie said that she was gonna check into it and she agreed it was outrageous but I see the same numbers again. Can you fill me in on what happened there, Angie? We did switch providers. Um, I Right now, I'm not sure what so going forward it's going to look like because there was a lot of cost that we had to pay when we switched over to get everything. The switch over was, a, you know, cost a little bit of time for their technician. And then when he was out here, he discovered a lot of things that the previous company was not updating. So that a lot of our server software was outdated. The firewall was outdated. There was just a lot of things that he discovered. So. Okay. Wow. Um, so we were not only getting charged a ton, it wasn't doing a very good job, it sounds like. Exactly. So we got screwed last year. We fired them. We're back with this other company. That's the IT contract line item is not for when the printer doesn't work or I can't make my mouse do whatever it's supposed to do. It's generally for the server and the protection of all the city information and making sure that our systems are secure and safe. And the same for the police. They take care of all of the, the firewalls and all the stuff over there that they have to maintain for their records and all of that. It's, it's a lot more complicated than just the techie stuff so, on the computer end. Well, they must have quoted you a price to have you switch. So what was that price? No, they don't give this, it's an hourly rate. They charge by the hour. We pay a, we pay what's called block support. So I pay $2,000 and then we use that up. And when we use up the $2,000, they send me a bill for another $2,000. So the hourly rate, we get we get charged for what he's working. So the previous company was a set monthly rate. And and at the time it sounded like a good deal, but it turned out that they 
they weren't doing anything. So yeah, it was a very bad deal. And so this this is we get what we're paying for. We know what we're paying for. I get an extremely overly detailed report of every single thing that that he does when he's working either here or remotely. Um, so we know exactly what we're paying for. And like I said, we just switched back, so I don't have a good I don't have a really good solid picture of what we're going to be looking at for the next year. I honestly don't know. My my assumption after he's got everything squared away is that we're really not going to use him that much. So I'm hopeful that that 48,000 will be more like 30,000 or 38,000. I'm hoping that it's going to be a lot less. But I can't I can't know that because we're just getting started. Okay. Well, thank thank you for the update on that. I appreciate it. And and what spurs on the work? Is it a computer that triggers him, or do you guys have to call, or is it both? Um, they get they get notified when there's issues with the server. If something goes down, like the other day when the internet crapped out for ten minutes or whatever, he sent me an email. He said, "Hey, are you guys down?" We said, "Didn't get the email because we were down." But then ten minutes later, we were back up and everything was fine. Um, if there's something else with our individual computers or just something that's not working right, then we just send him an email and nine times out of 10, he can just remote in and fix it from wherever he is. He doesn't have to drive out here. So he right, did right. at the beginning, but now most of it's just gonna be remote. Yeah, I understand that. I have to do the same thing remote and they fix my computer. So I understand how handy it is. It just it seems like the pricing is just kind of like smoke and mirrors. You never know what you're going to pay till the end of the year. So <clears throat> maybe that's well, the nature of the business. Yeah, because it's not, it's not a monthly fee. It's an hourly rate, which I can I can dig up an invoice and tell you what it is. Oh, I could probably guess. Um, so would you have an idea at six months in? Or when did you start this switch over? Um, they came back with us, what, three months ago, maybe? Okay. Um, let's see. So his rate, our tech rate is, yeah, filled at $174 an hour. So, so look at, looking at your monthly charges since your initial cost, you could probably have a good idea. Um, I can look real quick and tell you what we've paid them. We're at about 14000 since February. And a lot of that was just the switchover cost. So I'm anticipating that we're not going to be that's not going to be the normal for a three month period. Okay, thank you. Sorry everyone for dragging that out, but it's been bugging me. Dale, go ahead. Well, I'll throw out another option, just see what kind of traction it gets. Um, we haven't hired the handyman caretaker position. Um, I know I contested that when it came to council, whether or not that was going to be sustainable through the budget. Uh, it depends on what our priorities are here, folks. We could probably cut that position and, and just contract out for the cemetery work separately. Um, and, and have the money for the trees and have the money for the reserve and probably put a little in contingency. What's the landscaper? What's the line item for that caretaker? It's in salaries. So is it's there is there a plan for the trees? Am I missing something there? Do we have something set up? Or is that just a want to thing? Well, they, I had requested originally when the request came from Councillor Allen at the time, 
that we meet and decide how much money we need before we put they make the motion but then they just made the motion to put the 20,000 take I think the motion was take 20,000 from the budget and put it for the trees um, so the only real place that has to come from is general fund but there isn't a there isn't a plan as of right now outside of the travel organ beautification thing there is not a a new plan that councils made motions on to put trees back in specific spots or anything we have to get the surveys to see what the the business property sorry property owners have said about the trees right okay but i know last year we pulled money out of the general fund for the skate park and now this so it just seems like we're we're just tossing general fund money around for things that yeah aren't happening <laughs> or have a don't have a real plan i don't know he has got a plan, Ange, okay? Well, okay, but, but it was, I mean, you know what I mean. It's like now we've got tons of money and yeah, for the yeah. skate park, but. Well, the general fund is the only place that you have discretionary, actually have discretionary spending. Yeah. The rest of it's in, in uh, the it's water and sewer. You can't go in there and go willing to. Water and sewer, but. Parks has money that they could. I mean, they they're doing pretty good this year. They could have ponied up some extra for the skate park too. I mean, I'm just saying there's money that we've moved out of general fund for things that maybe general fund doesn't necessarily need to cover. So I have a little bit of concern about the proposal um, only because I have no idea what it would cost to have someone landscape a cemetery, but I'm thinking there's probably not a ton of savings in that. I'm thinking, I don't know anybody that, I mean, when we looked at doing it for City Hall and going in with a landscape company, with the school and city hall being the two big accounts, it was like fifteen thousand dollars a year for the city properties, and that that wasn't cemetery; that was business properties. To actually have a service come, so do you have a different thing in mind, Dale? Well, we we just got through having a an individual up there that we paid. And I think he even had benefits, and it was uh, sixteen like grand. He didn't have benefits. He had no. He had no benefits. Um, what do we call benefits? Had no benefits. I mean, did we pay payroll taxes? Yeah, but he had no. He had no insurance. Right. He had no insurance. No. Still, again, I mean, you know, I would think you'd be able to get a just a contractor, somebody in the community that you'd pay to go up and mow and weed eat and take care of that. But my question is, um, you wouldn't really, unless they're bringing their own equipment. Because I'm not going to have a contractor on city equipment, then they're just an employee, right? Well. I wouldn't let a contractor use our equipment you just did you said you what are you talking about tom was the an previous person if... he was an employee of the city though he was covered under our liability insurance for our equipment that's what i'm saying like a contractor to me has their own equipment comes as like a service and yes. the employee you're what you're saying is Go back to your proposal is go back to part time cemetery employee property maintenance. Yep. Yep. We can't can find that. Those people don't exist anymore. And nobody, nobody wants to work for one thing, and then try to find <laughs> somebody that only wants a few hours a week is even harder. 
Go ahead, Bruce. Uh, just for clarification, you paid furs on that individual. Yep. Right, but that's, so that's a benefit. That's a benefit. That's a benefit. Benefits to your health insurance. That's the big giant number that is benefits to self insurance. I get you. Uh, well, I guess it depends on the scope of work. You know who you imply who you hire. Uh, what's the scope of work that you can afford? Um. If you just want somebody to mow the lawn, mow the grass up there, and uh, pick up the brush or do certain things, you probably don't need to pay them the amount. Your hours are not going to be as much. Can it not be true? Yeah, except that ultimately what you get is when you're doing it, when you're coming at it from that perspective, you're going to end up with someone who doesn't care either. And the whole point of the council's kind of direction and the cemetery committee's direction was they wanted that better maintained than it was. That's why we had Tom in that position and put money in the salary line item to pay someone to keep it up to a standard that the community was expecting. And now, if, I mean, we could go back to that part-time person one, we haven't found that person out there. When we try to find people part-time, there's nobody that comes, or it's somebody that you don't really want going around $1,200 headstones and hitting them with the mower. But, so that's what we're saying is, we could go back that way, it's just wasn't, I mean, we could go to less maintenance or something more simple, but that wasn't really what, the council and committees kind of view of that they liked how well it was maintained and they'd like to keep that standard. So that's where we were kind of going with finding this collective person to do that standard, but then also do these things that we're paying fully loaded public works guys to help us do the honeydews and the little things that need maintenance around here. So it was kind of, we were trying, even though it's coming out of the general fund, to be more cost saving than we are currently with having people help with things that really a maintenance person could do. Go ahead, Dale. Yeah, I mean, I agree with your overall view of, of the goal there. My concern is we're already seeing that the general fund is not real stable. And we're struggling just to even put enough in for reserves. I mean, out of a $1.3 million budget, we can't scrape 24 grand up. Um, add in this new position, I'm, I'm still concerned that it's not going to be sustainable. As the JR pointed out earlier, the, you know, the cash on hand's going down. You know, if, if that position is eating some of that cash on hand, um, and, and it's hard to tell that we're going to keep doing that and we're going to end up in a fix. And um, I know we're making some wage jumps this year and we gave you that okay too. So uh, we've got to make a decision here what, what we think is in the best interest. Uh, I think, you know, we paid 16, 17 grand in, in wage up there at the cemetery before you might have to bump it up to 20 pay somebody a little more hourly rate to get somebody but it's still going to save us money in the long run versus this full-time position but um, deal, is it because all those honeydew maintenance activities are are also costing money that's the thing it's not just the cemetery that's a small chunk of where we were trying to find savings because ultimately when we have to call public works here to do something that may be someone not certified not fully loaded not you know what i'm saying as far as public work their wage is going to be a 
a good chunk different than potentially this group and, and their maintenance skill wage. So we're still going to have to pay for both things to get done. It's just how are we paying for it? Does that make sense? It makes sense, but uh, like I say, I'm still concerned about the cons uh, con sustainability and and I'm not saying that we can't get there eventually, but I think for myself, I'd like to see the budget really prove in itself that we've got that income, the cash on hand isn't continuing to decline. Because um, if we, you know, we've seen this before in other budgets where we just eat through our cash on hand for about three or four years and then we panic. on hand is diminishing. I'm not seeing that in I, when I look at the general fund. Where are you at? I'm on page three, the very top. All of them encompassed into one thing. So yeah, we had a high year, but our adopted budget was 240. And our proposed budget, it's going down by the 16 is what you're saying is this diminishing or well but you look at where you're actually had i mean we actually increased up to the 302 i mean that was actual revenue generated and now we're with this new budget we're down to 224 so something's eating that up at $77,889 worth which this new position, I think, uh, listening to the recording again today, it was uh, estimated at 71K. It was, sort of right around 70,000. It's not the wages, it's all the benefits that just killing us with the insurance and stuff. Go ahead, Rick. Yeah, I, I remember the discussion about this new position and, and your your thinking behind this position, uh, Josette, um, that it, all the little uh, things that we required public works to do, take away from what their big job is and so forth. And I definitely understood that position. And yet currently we only have one person that's interested. And I remember in the discussion that we just didn't want to pick anyone. Um, we wanted somebody who uh, doesn't need babysitting, that's qualified in the maintenance end of it. And um, if you find somebody, just pick somebody random that uh, needs to be babysat all the time and, and from public works, then it's, it's kind of defeating your purpose. So um at present we only have one application and I, I mean i remember angie saying well we just don't want to um we're kind of stuck right now <laughs> and we don't know what it's going to look like uh we only got a couple more months left in the summer for actually mowing um up at the cemetery so i i don't know we're kind of kind of in a catch-22 situation go ahead sam um it occurs to me that we skipped right along with the library situation and um and we're spending three times as much time on this Whereas the library has real solid numbers, uh, just the insurance alone to make a, a part-time person full-time is uh, is a considerable amount of money. Whereas you could, we could have considered having two part-time people and avoid the insurance part of it, and you know have two people under 20 hours rather than uh, one person just barely over 20 hours with all the bells and whistles. And the cemetery seems to be, you know, taking up a considerable amount of our time. 
to debate basically the same issue and the library was, oh, well, let's move on. We could go back to the library and say, no, just no. All that insurance money savings could go up to the cemetery and this issue would be done. Go ahead, Bruce. Uh, before we jump to that, Sam, I just have one more point on the cemetery. Uh, and I know this is tough for you, Ange, but I'm on the cemetery page. Um, your plot sales there, are those pretty much up to date? No. Um, ben sold some after I updated it last. Let me look. So right now, the cemetery total income for the year is um, fifteen thousand dollars. As opposed to eight hundred fifty. What's that? Say that again. As opposed to eight thousand one hundred fifty. That's what you have, Dan. Um, I don't. Yeah, I don't. I'm not looking at the okay. cemetery page. Yeah. You have the forecast eight thousand one hundred fifty. Yeah, you're in forecast. Yeah. Yeah. So you, 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 but right, right now we're at fifteen thousand. So we're getting back up into that range where we were before when we had a, a part-time caretaker. Correct. Yeah, we sold we sold a bunch of plots in just in April. So that was a big jump right after I updated this. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, if we did, if we did, if we did decide to do away with the operation, I mean the maintenance individual on the one side, we're back in the same range we were in in the past on the cemetery to fund that without going to uh, to general fund. We we're doing it on uh, less money than than what we uh, have right now. Yeah. from informational facts. So, you like know, you know, the one thing that struck me is, and then I'll go back to let Sam do his, his thing, is that, uh, you know, what our wants are as opposed to what we can afford are two different things. And you make some hard decisions about uh, what you can afford. You know, there needs to be maybe some structural changes into these budgets that uh, we're not hammering the general fund so dang hard. That, uh, um, you know, we got one year, we're going to deal with 20 grand for the trees. You know, uh, then the street's going to have to accept the price of whatever it takes to maintain them. Um, what was the other one? 20 for the skate park? Yeah. 10 out of general fund and 10 out of park. Yeah, that's a one point hit, 10. Okay. So, um, anyway, I just threw in some cuts. <laughs> So the thing I want to state about uh, the benefits is that as an employer, you can only really tax someone to work 20 hours and not more. They realize you're skirting the system and they're really close to being a full-time person with full-time responsibility and you're not paying their insurance and you're going to short them and make them work less hours and hire another person to work 10 hours too. Basically, that's what you guys are saying to do with the library person. That's not, so we're really multiple things as a city, but one of them is an employer. And that's a really shyster way to employ people is to employ someone for multiple years at just 20 hours with nothing yeah. because we don't want to pay for potentially, 
who even knows if they're going to have a family. Maybe it's just them by themselves on insurance. But it's it at some point you have to be a good employer. And and the person that Shannon proposed go to full time has been working under just under 20 hours with absolutely no insurance benefits that the rest of the people that work 21 hours and more get for a long time. It, it, that's part of the reason that worried us about putting the salary is we start needling kind of on, even though if you guys don't mean to, you needle about the value of someone uh, in their position and we should just get someone that can do it part time or we should get two people to to get no benefits and do it part time or contract the mower at some point you're stepping over a dollar to save a dime because you really don't get the efficiency the camaraderie the effectiveness the buy-in of that person to serve the city and the public when you're shortchanging people or you're doing a ton of part timing you you don't get the work ethic out of them that you get if you show them they have value by offering them what they're due basically for working for four years at nearly 20 hours with no benefit so we got to be careful on the fact that yeah we could go hire a ton of part-time people but then that's kind of not as efficient and then becomes kind of a logistical nightmare to manage. And like Rick's saying, you're going to end up babysitting all these part time people or someone's job is going to be just a list to tell that part time person what to do today. So on one hand, I get get what you're saying with the salaries and benefits are going up. But on the other hand, we got to be really cautious that we're not the slum lord of employers with multiple part-time people getting no benefit because that's what, what the city will become and then it will be harder to be as effective. Is that not what we said the past uh, caretaker was though? Well, he just, yeah, he so was. Is, is he that was. what? The but what I'm saying is if he had worked for four or five years, just we'd only let him have under 20 hours and he knew what was happening how long likely is he to stay right i mean he actually moved on to full-time work that's how we lost him so i'm not saying that you have to make every employee a full-time employee but when it comes to the library one she's been working a number of years as not a full-time employee but really doing a full-time employee's job so that's why i'm saying when you're talking about I think that's why it was a little easier for everyone to stomach the current person putting in the effort and time. And it maybe isn't as easy to stomach this new unknown person that we have yet to hire. I'm just trying to put a little background from from why maybe people were okay with one and are, are criticizing the other. Got it. Go ahead, Dale. It just seems to me that some of these jobs that are a shoe in for retired people, um, running a lawnmower, throwing some weed and feed, uh, running a weed eat eater. I, I know retired guys that do that for free every day. Um, some people, some people, you know, they just want that little bit of supplemental income. Uh, they don't, you know, and sometimes they can't, you can't make too much. So it just, I, I still struggle with that, that, you know, some jobs are fit to be part time, you know, it's just, there's little niches sometimes that you just need to fill with those. We, we, I get that Dale. And we did do that with Tom's position up at the cemetery. But there was not like an influx of retired people wanting a part-time cemetery mowing job. There, I think we had what two, two or three applicants. Two or three applicants, and all of them were young. Nobody was, you know, in the kind of prime of life, wanting a peaceful uh, landscape job. I don't know where those people are at. I mean, I'm see, I'm looking at a few of them right now, but. I don't know where they're at to actually hire. Are you guys interested in the job? Anyone? 
If we make it more time, would you do it? I don't know. Maybe. JR. You know, I, oh. I, may um, I might consider it because my school bus duties end in middle of June and I'm off for can't. three months. You can't. You're a, you're a councilman. Yeah. So that's what I figured. I don't mean to be, I don't mean to be that, but uh, Shirley had that problem. She ended up having to quit because uh, uh, the council, because she needed the income more than, you know, um, it's a sad state of affairs, um, Rick. Yeah, so, I know. Um, <laughs> yeah, Joe said, how did the, um, this is a related, just hang with me. How did the fee on the water bill get attached for parks? Was that a council decision or the voters? Um, I want to say it was a council decision, man. It's been on there forever, so I would have to do some research on that. It was a council decision, yes. Because you, because you know, we've been playing with the idea of raising that fee, right. and I know the citizens have noticed a dramatic um, uh, improvement in the parks because Tim's doing an awesome job, and he's probably underpaid as well. So I just wonder if it'd be possible to raise $3 on that and have another parks person to help him and give him a raise and maybe split with the cemetery. Then you got two people that hit the cemetery, hit the parks, bounce back and forth. I, I'm just kind of kind of spitballing here, but it doesn't seem like we have it in the budget for everything. Right. And that would raise about uh, roughly 36 to 40 K, a $3 increase on that. So you're gonna bump it up three bucks or two, three bucks? Three increase. Oh. Cause you got a, over a thousand accounts. Yeah. No need, did you have something? You're on the channel. council, uh, JR. I would not I, wanna be there if you did that. I said, I'm glad you're on the council there. I would not want to be there with that uh, $3 um, addition. They're going to hear, hear, they're going to raise holy hell with you. Well, that, I'm just doesn't, that doesn't diminish from your, your proposal. How many hours a week does the cemetery uh, recommend or require? What's in there, Ann? Yeah. What was in there when Tom worked? Um, 16 hours a week, I think, wasn't it? Have to look. Hang on. So he was half this time. year. This time of the year, it's probably more. Yeah. Um, as opposed to later on or further in, you know. Um, but it's definitely just part time. Yeah, it's under 10:40. Hang on, I'm pulling it up. Okay, can I go to Noni while you're pulling it up? Go ahead, Noni. What did it say? The background on that fee. It was the council decision set it at $1 per utility bill. Um, as a way to make improvements at the parks. And then it was the increase to $2. There were, of course, complaints at the $1, and there were complaints at the $2. But I suspect if you wanted to increase it by $3, make it $5 a month in order to maintain, help maintain the cemetery, there would be legitimate complaints. I think Lynn Simmons himself would raise up for that one. <laughs> I think you're right. <laughs> oh, Did he pass me? Yeah, okay. So, Ian, did you have an answer? Yeah, we budgeted um, last year, we budgeted for 1,040 hours, but he actually worked about 740. Twelve month period. 
Wasn't he injured and off work for a while also? Is that why this reduction in hours? No, not for very long. I don't remember. I think he like broke his back or something, but it wasn't a serious like long term injury. Oh. So oh, six hours a month, he just, fifteen hours a week. Yeah, he just worked what he needed to work. He didn't. Yeah. It, it, well, maybe we lost him because of lack of insurance. Is that what you're getting at, Josette? No, he just um, actually did a full-on career change into oh. a different line of work, so that he was really uh, interested in. I don't know that that would contributed to it. I'm just saying. He went to full. You got to sit around rather than work a little. <laughs> I think we were very satisfied with what, what he did up there. So 740 hours, he made major improvements. So yeah, I'm, I'm sure Ben probably was, had some hours in there too, but um so, I mean, just to give us an idea that, you know, probably under a thousand hours is definitely adequate up there. Right. Well, Mike did not do a horrible job. Um, he just put in less hours than uh, um, Tom did. So he had another job going on. He was still working over at Forest Lawn. So. Um, we've had, we've been doing that up there for quite some time, seven yeah. or eight years now. So we've heard multiple proposals. <laughs> um, I don't know if anybody's fully for any of them. So we know we have to find, so there's been one proposal to take, sorry, let me get there, the $14,000 out of contingency and put it into transfers out to deal with the general fund reserve shortfall. We still have $20,000 we're trying to find for the future tree, potential tree project. Um, the one option is when it comes to things paying for themselves, there is the potential you could take half of the 20,000 needed for the potential tree project out of contingency in streets. You have $41,000 in streets contingency. So then you're really only looking for 10. You could eliminate the position and pay for the trees project and the $14,000 transfer, but then that doesn't really solve our cemetery thing. We could we could let the honey dudes go, but it still doesn't solve our cemetery uh, upkeep shortfall. So that's what we're, those are the conundrums. What did we offer for a salary for a part-time worker when we, for the cemetery? He was getting paid 15 bucks an hour. Because at 740 hours at 20 bucks is still under 15 grand. Not, well, not a, a little bit more than that when you pay for payroll and furs and all that. But okay, well, but still we're under 20 grand, so. Close, yeah. Yeah. In saying that, what are you itching at? I'm just saying that it is possible to cover that cemetery. We could probably monetize, monetarily incentivize somebody to probably take that job. For a twenty dollar an hour, no benefits. Right. Yeah. 
I feel like I could do part of it, but I couldn't commit to 16 hours a week. <laughs> I do live nearby. No need. I have a question about the job. I mean, the cemetery is a lot of surface. Does it require a power mower, or would a hand mower be able to do it? <laughs> so we have a we have a cemetery mower that's up at the cemetery shed. Okay, so there is a cemetery mower that would it's be in cemetery equipment. So they weed whack basically edge the headstones once a year, clean up all the fall debris in the fall. Yeah. You know, all the leaves and stuff and build the turf in the spring with spring weeds and turf builder and then they do the mowing and the goal ultimately for the cemetery is to have someone that could also kind of not just be the landscape person but also have the professionalism to deal with families or people coming up there it wouldn't just be someone that ignored visitors they would give information and potentially um, be part of the cemetery crew and that they could dig and earn spot. They could do other things, not just mow. Okay, the person I have in mind would not fit that latter part. Oh, okay. Yeah, a lot of people are a little wigged out when you talk about remains. They're fine with mowing it. We had one person at the interview the year we got Tom who we said, yeah, are you okay with dealing with human remains in, you know, in the, whether it's burying an urn or digging a hole in the urn, and they were kind of like, what? <laughs> we're like, did you even read the job description? <laughs> <laughs> You're in, working at a cemetery. <laughs> Those human remains are in a bag. You're not touching them. Right. They're in a container of some sort. But yeah. For some people, that's still pretty wiggy. Yeah. For them. So, um, Jeff, can you take over for one second for me and just call on people as they need to talk? Gladly. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I know Ben is hoping to get someone to take his place because he spends a lot of time up there. Ben was not, was he not, he was not hired for cemetery, right? That is correct. Correct. Yeah, Ben was hired. Okay, and he does the GIS, is that his only duty? No, he does many things. So he does all the mapping, GIS stuff, as well as planning and cemetery. I couldn't hear a word you said. I could hear it, but I couldn't understand it. He does planning. He does planning. He does cemetery. He does GIS. Plus any other duties as assigned. Angie left her mic on, so you're echoing out on us. Do you want to hold on a second? Oh, no, I can hear. Hold on. How's there that? you go. I have the control. So that while I don't have his job description of the many duties I know he does, mapping, GIS, cemetery, planning, floodplain, Building. Yeah. Does anyone know how long it took Tom to mow the cemetery? Just 740 hours. Each time, though. Oh. One day. <laughs> oh, no. I don't. Depends on what gear you're in. Um, yeah. Sam? Yeah. Uh, I had uh, on doing it for quite a while up there. Uh, one year and that was with the old uh zero turn motor mower and it had a uh 
phony baloney collection bag on it, and it it would fill up really fast, and you'd have to go down and dump it. And, and uh, it was an old mold, and every time you got off of it, all the safety would have to go on, and it died. And so um, the new mower that they have for it, you, it's it's a fairly good sized John Deere. You know, you probably might be familiar with it with one. Um, it doesn't have any tip up. It's just uh, mulching. So, you know, you don't want to let it go too long. Um, it's pretty fast. Now, that one zero turn mower, it would take eight hours to do it, to do the complete job. You know, so, and I only ran over one gravestone that had that issue, Mitchell, and your husband hit the same dang one. So, you hit it first, so we're claiming it was you. <laughs> I so felt you, like hell for a long time. You literally only string trim the headstones once a year. Right, and just, Memorial Day. And, and mow it. Why? I think 10 hours a week would be ample. He also blows off each individual headstone as well. Yeah. Well, not just it's mowing. not really just about mowing. It's ultimately about someone that when we need an urn, urn placement, they need to dig a hole. If we need a headstone set, they potentially are forming up and pouring the cement where the headstone gets placed. There's different things. Yeah. We were hoping they would be able to put remains in the columbarium, do other things, not just mow. So it wasn't really just landscape. Like maybe 12 hours a week. This time of year, you know, you if you do you do mowing uh, in the parks over there, you know, this time of year you got to hit you got to hit it twice every couple every week or so, you know, uh, maybe week and a half because you don't want to let it get too high because then you you've got uh, the all the hay, hay rows out there and uh, wind rows and and you're yeah. gonna have to do something with that so. And then it slows down in August. It's too hot. Nothing growing up there. So um, your your mowing gets down to almost you know. You do weeding, uh, weeding, but weed. Uh, right now, I think he's doing the weed and weed type deal, going out and hitting spots with that. Well, and uh, I, I yeah. happen to be a certified pesticide applicator. I have a license for that. Nice. There you go. Um, we'll put you to work. I would, I would consider. I would consider looking into this for twenty dollars an hour. <laughs> it's already negotiated. Well, that's what uh, Dale offered. Yeah. Sam. If you're yes. seriously interested in applying for the job, you need to recuse yourself. Because it'd be an ethics issue. Per Unless we're just talking theoretically. At what point would I need to... Uh, well, are we making a decision on the position through this conversation? I mean, I think that's the goal in the budget, right? Or just uh, not have a full-time person, I thought is what we were talking about. If you are, okay, the issue arises when you use your, this is a, not you specifically, but in general, when you use your position on the public body to create a position for potentially yourself. So just, sorry, I had to eventually say something. Got it. So I might like to propose something. We're getting, it's 9, 10. We're supposed to go to 9.30, and it doesn't seem like we have a consensus of any proposal everyone can live with. So I'm going to propose something. I'm going to propose that we have one more budget meeting, and you give the week in between for staff to go through the general fund departments and see if there's cuts we can make to line items that are in our current budget as proposed before um and then we come back to you with some proposal of cuts 
to try and transfer the 14,000 to the general fund reserve, facilities reserve, and then a proposal for the $20,000 uh, potential tree project, and then brainstorm the cemetery maintenance position, interview this poor guy that's scheduled to be here in the morning, and see how it works out and and if that you know maybe we even propose hey if this was a part-time position are you still just as interested you know it's one one person we can we can ask if they're the right fit they might it might work out and then come back to a budget meeting where we hash all we're doing is hashing out this last these last uh, conundrums because I don't feel like we're gonna get to it or know all the answers in the next 20 minutes. Does anyone else concur that that's our position or? Think I, I agree. I will do some research on my end and I will ask prior to the next meeting if there's a potential that I should recruit, re, uh, whatever she said, uh, <laughs> recuse myself from the conversation next week. Okay, so is that, is there consensus of the budget uh, committee that, that we come back one more time to look at our options on this section? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Next so week. That, can I make a comment, please? Yes. Uh, when I lived in Sedona back in the uh, 70s, I had a contract with the, the Sedona Cemetery they paid me, I can't remember how much it was, but I, I received a set fee per month and they gave me a list of responsibilities. And there were times when I worked my butt off and there was times when I didn't do anything. If it was snowing, I didn't do anything. Uh, if it was flooding, I didn't do anything. When, when the weeds were tall, tall, I had to keep them down. So if there's a... Uh, a salary that are, you know, uh, <clears throat> a monthly amount that someone would say, I will agree to do these things. And you, I mean, you can't be piling on, you put everything out there you want and they agree to, to work for that amount per month. They have slow months, they got really hard fast months. That's what I did. Well, it's an interesting idea to ponder. Yeah, sounds like the terms have already been set. <laughs> and I know that the city is generous with their 5% each year. And uh, cost <laughs> <laughs> you're funny. <laughs> no, I think you could make it attractive and not bust the budget. Well, let us uh, take a look at it and see what we can come up with. Yes. So if there's no further comment, we will recess to, what is a week from now? 25th. 25th. The 25th at 6.30. Wonderful. All right. You said 20, 25th? Okay. Stephanie, I appreciated the email. Thank you. All right. We'll recess for tonight. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night.